Okay, guys, let's wrap it up. So, supervised learning. What do we give to the SL train model? Like, let's say, for example, what do we? What did we see in the beginning of this lecture? Two things, right? The regression model and classification. So, what do we give to the model to get trained? So, we need to get it first. The features, very good. Okay, and uh, these are, uh, of course, you know, uh, the labeled data. So, one to L samples. And what do we else give it? The, uh, the target output, so we need to give it the label, so it learned the mapping from the feature data to the target label. And what is the output here? It's the parameters or of the model. It's the parameters of the model, okay? So it's called the parameters of the model that you learned when you're optimizing W, right? This is during training. Now, when you're testing your model, you need to give it what? The test set, of course, so X test. Okay, and you need to give it what you have learned, the parameters, right, of the model from the training step. And what are you predicting? The Y for the test set. Very good. So Y test, but here it's predicted. Okay, now let's look at unsupervised learning. What are we giving to unsupervised learning? The, the features, just the features, yes, very good. So we give it, for example, the available data that we have, okay? And we don't have any, um, like, this sample. We just want to cluster the data, do something with it. So what is the output, for example? It depends. We can learn so many things, but the output might vary a lot. But in case we're doing clustering, what is it in case, in case of clustering? Yes, very good. It's the cluster... Uh, ID, okay, so or group ID, cluster ID, or the belonging index, you, you can call it whatever you want. Now, for semi-supervised learning, what are we giving to the, to the, to, for uh, the training? Okay, I, I, I should write this properly. Okay, so we have SS train, okay, and we have SS test. Right. Okay, so you guys tell me. For training, semi supervised learning, what do we give it? For labeled and also the their corresponding labels and the unlabeled data. Very good. And then uh, what do we get? We learn a model here, similar. Okay, another model. So let's call this um, supervised and this is SS. Okay. So then in the testing stage, what do we give it? X test, yes, and W semi supervised. And what are we predicting? The labels, yes, for the test set. Very good. So the only difference is in the X U. Okay? Now for the uh, transductive learning, what do we give the model? So we give XL, YL. We also give it X U. So this is like supervised. But we have another uh, thing that we're adding, the test, right? So all of it is together. Like you can consider actually this XU as an X test and that's all you're giving it, okay? So you can merge them together. What you've hidden, you're solving it together. So you're not, you're not testing the model on unseen data. So you're optimizing it somehow to learn how to label this. So you, all you give it is your XU, uh, which can be uh, considered as X test, or you can look at it this way. Okay, so this whole thing, if you combine X U and X test, so this is your X test. So you're giving it at the training stage. So this is very important. We need to write here TL train. And what is it doing? It's learning also a model that we can later evaluate. So we're going to look at more uh, examples, specific examples for these, and let's do this right now, very quickly. So if you guys look at this paper, the matrix completion problem is transductive learning problem. So you can see it right here, so this is a transductive learning uh, multi-label recognition problem, and if you look at what they're trying to do, 
So uh, they're giving basically the training data, putting it together. You have the labels. Okay, you have two labels in this case. You're predicting two labels. You have your data set, and you're giving the model also the test, the testing, uh, the missing testing labels that you want to learn at the same time. So what you're doing, you're taking all these guys together and solving the problem for all and using all. That's what they're doing. So, um, and then how they're formulating this. So you can look, we're going to just read this very quickly. Uh, it's not difficult. So you can see even, you know, like top-notch uh, papers, you can guys figure out now simply. So what we do, we extract visual features from M training painting. So these are the feature vectors. Okay, so you have M samples. And uh, from N testing paintings, we have, we extract these features. So we have the X0, the feature matrix for the uh, training data, and the unlabeled data or the test data that we're going to learn how to label when putting those together, okay? Now, uh, this is, you know, the dimension of the, the feature vector. So it has, uh, L is the dimension of the feature space, how many features we have. We have L features in this case. And then the multi-labels are denoted by Y. So these are the number of labels. K is the dimension. In this case, we have only two labels, okay? The emotion, and they want to also predict the um, how abstract is the painting, okay? And uh, we assume that there are available, so for the sake of, for, of clarity, we assume that the, these labels are available for training, okay, while unknown for the test set, okay? So this is what we want to predict by solving the problem together. How is this problem uh, is basically being solved? It's, um, you, oops, it's using... Uh, nonlinear matrix completion. So they put everything in a big matrix. The matrix has missing values. We're optimizing something and filling those values. What are those values? Those guys, okay? The, the labels of the unlabeled data that we want to predict, okay? The unknown labels for the testing set. How is this being solved? It's in this, using this formula. So basically we're learning what we have we have y0, so these are, um, k is the number of, uh, k is the number of labels, okay, we have two labels, l is the number of features, so this is the dimension of this matrix right here, x0 is l by m, it has l rows, m columns, what is m is the labeled samples, X1 is basically the um, unlabeled sample, so what we want to predict is this guy, okay? Right, and then how are we putting this? We want to predict this one, but um, we're taking both labeled and um, unlabeled data. We're, we're trying to learn um, a W, a mapping function classifier that will map those onto the outputs. But this one, we know. We know it's a uh, ground truth, okay? So can we say that matrix completion is basically transactive? It is transductive learning because it's doing everything all together. You see what you're taking, you're taking everything together to solve it. But you're going to see later on, this, this is, there is a whole lot of math here, and they're deriving all these equations, putting it in a closed form so you can simply solve it in one go. And uh, yeah, but the problem, you, the way you look at it, is just this one. So this is, you know, uh, a joint, what they call matrix comp completion approaches, they jointly, you know, uh, integrate the label and the features in a single matrix, and it's considered as one problem. So you're taking, you're defining this matrix where you're putting your labels, but also you're putting your, your X matrices, your feature matrices, and then you're learning a mapping that maps the <coughs> features onto the labels, but with some missing labels that you don't know and you need to find out, okay? So these will be predicted. So we will look at more examples.